April 4, 2024, News Report 1. On April 4, 2024, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen arrived in Guangzhou, kicking off her visit to China. Photos showed that there was no red carpet prepared by the Chinese side. On her way to China aboard a special plane, Yellen was asked about taking action to address China's excess clean energy, particularly the issue of solar panels. She stated that the U.S. does not rule out taking any measures to protect its industry. Yellen emphasized that the U.S. does not want to decouple from China, and both sides can benefit from trade and investment, but it must be done on a level playing field. U.S. Treasury officials also indicated that Yellen's focus on this visit is to highlight the global economic consequences of China's industrial overcapacity, urging China to correct unfair trade practices and ensure fair treatment for American workers and businesses. Yellen will stay in Guangzhou for two days before meeting with Chinese Vice Premier He Lefeng and Governor of Guangdong Province Wang Weizhong for talks. Afterwards, Yellen will travel to Beijing and meet with Beijing Mayor Li Chang, Minister of Finance Lian Fangan, Governor of the People's Bank of China Pan Gongsheng, and Deputy Director of the Central Finance and Economics Committee Lu He. This visit demonstrates Lu He's special status and influence. During her time in Beijing, Yellen will also meet with economists, students, and American business leaders. U.S. Treasury officials stated that Yellen hopes to hear from all parties in China to better understand the current situation in China. This visit is seen as an important signal of easing tensions in U.S.-China relations, demonstrating America's stance towards China. Next, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will also travel to China for talks, and Yellen's visit to China is mainly to showcase America's posture to American voters. News Report 2 On April 3, a powerful 7.2 magnitude earthquake struck Hualien County, Taiwan, with the latest figures as of April 4 showing 10 dead, 1,099 injured, 705 trapped, and 15 missing. The latest victim was a 65-year-old man who went missing in Taroko National Park. His body was found by rescuers on April 4. The 30 Taroko Silver Hotel employees who were previously missing were also found and moved to a safe area on April 4. However, there are still four foreign tourists missing, including two Australians, one Canadian, and one unidentified foreign tourist. Meanwhile, Taiwan's losses from this earthquake are relatively small, with Western countries praising Taiwan's earthquake prevention measures. U.S. geological experts pointed out that Taiwan is located in a seismic zone but has a strong early warning system and buildings that meet seismic standards, enabling Taiwan to better cope with strong earthquakes. In contrast, earthquake prevention measures in Los Angeles and San Francisco cannot compare with those in Taiwan, and those in Seattle and Portland are even worse. Wallace, a professor of civil and environmental engineering at the University of California, Los Angeles, said that Washington State has begun evaluating school buildings in recent years, but many brick and wood structures in Seattle have not been renovated and may collapse in a major earthquake. Taiwan's laws require buildings to have earthquake resistance measures, with the government subsidizing the additional costs. If buildings fail to meet earthquake requirements and cause accidents, the constructors will be held criminally liable. Meanwhile, Japan is highly concerned about the Taiwan earthquake, with non-profit organizations starting online donations for the Taiwan earthquake on April 3. Japanese rock band X Japan donated 10 million yen to the Taiwan Red Cross, and 16,000 convenience stores nationwide in Japan began fundraising. On the other hand, China's Weibo official announced the banning of more than 20 accounts and the deletion of more than 340 jokes and incitement to extreme emotional remarks related to the Taiwan earthquake. News Report 3 Japanese headline news NHK reported that the Japan Meteorological Agency measured a 6.0 magnitude earthquake off the coast of Fukushima Prefecture at noon on April 4, with a depth of 40 kilometers and no tsunami triggered. The earthquake intensity in Fukushima, Iwait, and Miyagi prefectures was 4, while in Aomori and Akita prefectures it was 3. 
East Japan Railway Company stated that some sections of the Tohoku Shinkansen were without power due to the earthquake, and the safety of the lines is currently being confirmed. Tokyo Electric Power Company checked the nuclear power plants and found no abnormal conditions due to the earthquake. The China Earthquake Network Center measured a 5.5 magnitude earthquake in Mangia Town, Wadagugu, Haishi Prefecture, Qinghai Province, from 8 to 8.30 a.m. on April 4, with a depth of 10 kilometers. Although Qinghai's earthquake magnitude was not high, as Mangia is a poor city in China, most of the houses are adobe, and the local government's disaster relief capabilities are weak, which is worrying. News Report 4 Central News Agency reported that former President of Taiwan Ma Ying-ju attended the Qingming Festival Imperial Ancestral Ceremony in Huangling County, Shangxi Province, on April 4. The Director of the Taiwan Affairs Office of the State Council, Song Tao, and Deputy Director Chiu Keiming accompanied him. Ma Ying-ju and Song Tao laid flowers together. During the flower-laying ceremony, Ma ying stated that his visit was to express respect for Chinese culture and ancestral worship. He emphasized that he cannot represent the people of Taiwan and expressed the importance of letting more people understand the importance of ethnic cultural inheritance. News Report 5 Yonhap News Agency reported that South Korean chip maker SK Hynix announced on April 3 an investment of $3.87 billion to establish a next-generation high-bandwidth memory production base in Indiana, USA. SK Hynix is one of the world's three major memory manufacturers and plans to start mass production in the second half of 2028. This is the company's first advanced AI chip packaging factory in the United States. SK Hynix produces the most high-bandwidth memory in the world and exclusively supplies the fourth and fifth-generation high-bandwidth memory to NVIDIA. Chip manufacturers in the United States face major issues, not in terms of funding, as the U.S. provides subsidies, and companies also invest funds. The most important issue is the lack of technical workers and the high cost of wages. Meanwhile, Korean and American officials are discussing the issue of restricting the export of chip equipment and technology to China. According to informed sources, the U.S. hopes that Korea will restrict the export of manufacturing equipment and technology for high-end chips and memories to China, including logic chips more advanced than 14 nanometers and memories exceeding 18 nanometers. This is consistent with the restrictions announced by the U.S. Department of Commerce in 2022 for the first time. News Report 6 The Liberty Times reported that Lt. Gen. Chen Qianyi, Chief of Staff of the Taiwan Army, stated on April 3 that the Army would shoot down incoming drones. Recently, Chinese drones have been frequently flying to the Taiwan-controlled island of Erden in Kinmen, filming close-up shots of the island's army activities and mocking the lack of preparation by the Taiwan army in videos. Chen suggested that such drone harassment falls into a gray area event and can also be seen as cognitive warfare. The Taiwan army has clearly instructed that as long as drones enter the range, signal guns can be used to warn, and if there is no response, they can be shot down. The defense headquarters in Kinmen has confirmed that Chinese drones may fly at heights of up to 6,000 meters, making them difficult to detect within visual range. Therefore, Kinmen's soldiers have been instructed to be more vigilant. In addition, Asahi Shimbun reported that the U.S. Army will deploy a new medium-range missile launcher in the Asia-Pacific region by the end of this year to enhance deterrence against China. This new missile system may be the land-based Typhoon system, which can launch Tomahawk cruise missiles and new standard missile, six air defense missiles. Sources said that this system may be deployed in Guam and can be transferred to Japan for training at any time. U.S. Department of Defense officials stated that this new missile system will narrow the gap between the U.S. and China in missile capabilities and enhance deterrence. News Report 7 Agents France Presa reported that U.S. officials said President Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu will have a phone call on April 4. Biden will express dissatisfaction with Israel's mistaken strike on a rescue organization. In the airstrike on April 1, 
seven employees of the World Central Kitchen were killed, attracting wide attention worldwide. The victims included three British nationals, one Polish national, one Australian national, one Palestinian, and one person with dual Canadian-American nationality. Netanyahu stated that this was an unintentional attack and called it a tragedy. He promised that Israel would thoroughly investigate the incident and ensure that similar incidents do not happen again. Israeli President Herzog expressed deep condolences and sincere apologies for the deaths of the four humanitarian workers in a statement issued on the evening of April 2. Biden said in a statement on April 2 that the deadly attack made him feel angry and heartbroken. He emphasized that Israel must take more measures to ensure the safety of aid workers and civilians. National Security Council spokesman Kobe said on April 3 that the U.S. firmly supports Israel's right to self-defense, and while the president's disappointment has changed, the U.S.'s supportive stance towards Israel has not changed. News Report 8 The government of Iwu City, Zhejiang Province, announced on April 2 that, starting immediately, families with two children can receive a subsidy of 100,000 yuan for buying a house, and families with three children can receive a subsidy of 200,000 yuan for buying a house. In addition, for the situation where there are no commercial houses in Iwu City, from now until June 30 this year, for new houses with a total price not exceeding 3.5 million yuan and a construction area not exceeding 150 square meters, a subsidy of 1,000 yuan per square meter can be obtained. The subsidy is first come, first served. Furthermore, families purchasing new houses can withdraw housing provident fund to pay the fees. If citizens do not have a provident fund, they can apply to open an account and continuously deposit the provident fund for six months and then apply for a provident fund loan, which has a relatively low interest rate. These measures show that governments in various regions of China are beginning to take various measures to promote real estate market activities. News Report 9 the Emergency Management Bureau of Dungguan City, Guangdong Province, announced that a fire broke out at Kangyi Nursing Home in Dungguan City in the early hours of April 4, resulting in three deaths and ten injuries, one of whom is in critical condition. The nursing home is an 11-story building, and the fire originated in room 303 on the third floor, with an area of 20 square meters, equivalent to one room. The investigation and handling of the accident are underway. Kangyi Nursing Home is a privately run nursing home established in 2019. According to a nursing home staff member, there are many elderly Hong Kong residents living in the nursing home, and they were not injured in the fire and have been moved to a safe place. The practice of Hong Kong elderly people living in mainland China is called northbound retirement. According to estimates by the Hong Kong Census and Statistics Department at the end of 2021, there are 85,000 Hong Kong residents aged 65 and above living long-term in Guangdong Province. By the end of 2023, Hong Kong will have 1.5 million elderly people aged 65 and above, accounting for 20% of the total population. With the aging population in Hong Kong intensifying, the situation of inadequate supply of elderly care services is becoming more serious. Last July, the Hong Kong Confederation of Trade Unions visited more than 2,000 Hong Kong residents aged 55 and above, and the results showed that 87.9% of them were willing to live or retire in mainland China in the long term. The most popular cities for retirement are Zhongshan, 23%, Shenzhen, 20%, and Guangzhou, 18%, mainly because these cities are close to Hong Kong. News Report 10 Hubei radio and television station reported that an intriguing incident occurred in Neijiang City, Sichuan Province. On the evening of April 3, at a beef noodle shop, two women were harassed by two men. After refusing their request to accompany them for drinks, a fierce conflict broke out. Afterwards, the police intervened in the investigation, and similar incidents occur frequently in various parts of China, reflecting the current situation of communication patterns in the lower social strata. 
The report pointed out that Chinese social governance faces challenges, and there is great uncertainty in the living conditions of the lower social strata.